Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Or oh, if you're just joining for uh, for this session, uh, a warm welcome from the open group um, to this debate. We've got something. It's a, a little different here. It's our first virtual um, debate that we've run in one of these sessions, and uh, very much looking forward to it. It's on a a topic that uh, is. Uh, is much talked about um, whether it, in whatever channel you're you're on on social media and LinkedIn and everywhere, everywhere else, enterprise architecture and agile are they uh, compatible or not? Do you need one if you're using the other? So that's the theme. Um, our, our host today for the uh, debate will be Sonia, who you've just uh, heard from in the previous session. Um, and our debaters, uh, I will just introduce them. Um, we have um, arguing that uh, enterprise architecture is um, key for the agile team success is uh, Chris Frost of Fujitsu. Chris has worked for Fujitsu since 2005 in a variety of technical leadership roles. At present, he's a principal enterprise architect within the application technology consulting division, which provides guidelines, standards, and expert technical support for the global Fujitsu group. Previous to this, he has been the CTO for various business units in Fujitsu UK and Ireland on large accounting contracts for several Fujitsu customers. And uh, not in his bio, but I should note, uh, Chris is also a, a valued member of the Open Group Governing Board. So welcome, Chris. Um, debating the uh, con position today, um, we have uh, Vishal Kumar, who is a, a TOGAF certified professional and working group leader for Digital Technology Adoption Roadmap Series Guide, and is currently working as a consultant and associated with EY India. Vishal is also ITIL certified and has enhanced his career experiences with an MBA in telecom management. So uh, welcome, Vishal. And uh, I'm going to uh, leave you in Sonia's capable hands, and uh, I wish you both uh, the best of luck with the debate. Okay, thank you very much for that presentation, Steve. We are having, we're having quite a very interesting topic today, which is EA supporting Agile and Enterprise Agility, and we have a pro and a con position here. The proposition is Enterprise Architecture has a practice and the role of the Enterprise Architects are key for Agile team success. This is going to be defended by Chris Frost, and the other one is Agile teams do not need support from Enterprise Architecture, which is going to be uh, presented by Bisho, like um, Steve just said. So, so this is the structure. First, a very quick introduction, um, and then it will be a, a proposition declaration. We're also going to explain some rules. Then we're going to have the first vote, in which the audience is going to vote against or in the composition, then Chris and, and Vishal will have some time for stand for their positions. Then we are going to have some Q&A uh, question or comments from the audience. So I encourage you to use the Q&A facility to give your points in there because the, you are very important for us, your feedback. Then it's going to be some for and again summation of the positions. We are going to revote again to see if the debate has changed, shift the mind of the audience. And then we are going to have some conclusions delivered by our debaters today. So with no further um, delay, we're going to explain very quickly some rules. First, uh, when any of the debaters will have some time to stand their position uh, with uh, speaking clearly and with a very clear, concise uh, statements and keeping the debate in personal and professional. A audience are asked to start putting their comments on the Q&A facility. There will be commented later on. And then it will be in the vote, the debaters also should cast their vote. And in the case of a tie, also the host, in this case, my person, will be able to also vote. So please go ahead and take the vote whenever you uh, let you know that the facility is available. We have already explained who our debaters is. So thank you, Chris and Bishop, for this effort. And I have already uh, introduced myself. I delivered the, the previous presentations. I'm Sonia Gonzalez, the Togo product manager. And of course, our attendees, your participation is very important. We are interested to know your views. So please take the time to comment in the Q&A facility. And then there's the vote. So I will hand over to our uh, supporters in the in the event, uh, you will have a few minutes, uh, four to five minutes to go to vote 
either the for, the against position, or to abstain if you don't have a specific view on this. Again, the proposition is that the project status as a practice and the role of the architects are key for agile team success. And the against position is agile teams do not need support from enterprise architects. So um, uh, please take your time for go into the polling facility and, and cast your votes in there. Okay, we're going to give one more minute to this to see if people will cast their vote. So how we have, so far we have 45 responses. So please go ahead and get us know your views about this. Okay, we have 65 votes at the moment. We're going to give one more minute to give you a chance to cast your votes. And then we are going to start with the debate. Okay, more than 100 votes, great. So I think we are going pretty well and one more minute and we are going to start and proceed with the next point, which is precisely the, for the debaters to start their position. So now I think uh, we can close the vote now. So perhaps if we can see the results on the screen. Okay, interesting. So we have more people for the four position. Okay, interesting. We have a few with the against and we have a blue with the abstain. So let's see what happens after the debate standard positions. And so keep in mind this chart for later on. Okay, thank you for that. And now we're going to proceed with the 10 minutes that Chris is going to have to stand his uh, position. So Chris, thank you for joining us in this debate. So over to you now. Okay, thank you very much, Sonia. So let's just move on to the next slide. Right, well, hello, everybody. As Sonia said in the introduction, uh, my name is Chris Frost uh, and I'm from Fujitsu. And this is the proposition I'm supporting today. And I see from the poll I've got a, a pretty, high, uh, pretty high bar to jump up there. Enterprise architecture as a practice and the role of the enterprise architect are key for agile team success. So I want to start the debate. I want to start the debate by looking at the very beginning of the Agile Delivery Movement, the manifesto for Agile software development. And this is something that's often uh, put in front of you when people are perhaps arguing that maybe agile development doesn't need some of the techniques and the processes that uh, you know might be characterized as a little bit more uh, rigid and uh, constraining than is appropriate for agile delivery and it's because of words like this in the manifesto we are uncovering better ways we have come to value individuals and interactions over processes and tools working software over comprehensive documentation and responding to change over following a plan and that sounds uh, well that's, that sounds pretty bad for enterprise architecture but if we move on uh, what's the what's the very next sentence in the agile manifesto it says that is while we while there is value in the items on the right we value the items on the left more okay there is value in the things on the right the things on the right are the things like the processes and tools, the, uh, the documentation, the plan. And of course, it's natural to say, it's quite right to say the things on the left are valued more because it's things like the working software. And obviously, that is what the CEO of a company or the customers who are using uh, the services, that's what they use. That is clearly the most valuable thing. But there is value in those other things uh, on the right hand side. And if we want to think about that a little bit more, then think about uh, some of the other things that are published in the manifesto. On the very same website, there's an interesting page on the history of the Agile Manifesto. Here's a little piece of it written by one of the authors of the original statement, Jim Highsmith. And he says, the Agile movement is not anti-methodology. In fact, many of us want to restore credibility to the word methodology. We embrace modeling, but not in order to file diagrams in some dusty corporate repository. We embrace documentation, but not hundreds of pages of never maintained and rarely used tomes. We plan, 
but we recognize the limits of planning in a turbulent environment. So coming back to the proposition, enterprise architecture is a practice and the role of the enterprise architect, a key for agile team success. Let's think now, let's look now at some of the things that are in some of the popular agile delivery frameworks. Let's start with what's probably the most famous of all, um, the most popular of all, SAFE. A couple of things I've taken straight off the SAFE website here, so credit where it's due. Uh, it's from Scaled Agile on their website. Um, you can see there that uh, SAFE explicitly recognizes the role of the enterprise architect and some of the things that the enterprise architect should do, like be involved in the technology choices and the implementation strategies and so on. And SAFE's definition of enterprise architecture, again, recognizes that role of enterprise architect and some of those uh, familiar architecture domains that uh, any of us trained in TOGAF would recognize, things like business architecture and uh, information architecture and so on. And it's not just SAFE. If we uh, look at, uh, if we look at some of the other um, agile delivery methods, um, for example, Disciplined Agile, um, DAD, we see that also recognizes this thing called enterprise architect and enterprise architecture and its key role uh, linking up some of the things like uh, delivery and governance and technology roadmaps and so on. So the evidence for enterprise architecture um, in Agile deliver, delivery, I would say, is pretty strong. Now, when you look at those methods, and if you dive into them in detail, you'll see language that might be a little bit unfamiliar, perhaps things like intentional architecture, emergent architecture, architecture runway and guardrails and things like this. But these are concepts that map easily onto enterprise architecture frameworks like TOGAF. So my key point here is that sure, um, enterprise architecture needs to be adapted for agile teams, but not abandoned. Now, let's look at something a little bit different. Thinking again about enterprise architecture as a practice and the role of the enterprise architect being key for agile team success. I want to look at an example now that some of you might find a little bit surprising in a debate about agile and enterprise architecture. It's a rather magnificent picture of um, Saturn V launching Apollo 11. So I'm thinking about the Apollo program here. That might surprise some of you. Uh, you might be thinking, what does uh, the Apollo program to do with enterprise architecture and agile delivery? Uh, well, they might not have used the term enterprise architecture in the program, but they certainly did things like enterprise architecture. There was strategic planning and architecture prior to the solution delivery linked to the business objectives. For example, the whole concept of having a separate lander spacecraft that separated from the uh, main spacecraft in lunar orbit and descended to the moon, that was decided back in 1962, which was five years ahead of the first flight. Uh, a guy called John Hubolt was mainly responsible for that, and he might not have called himself an enterprise architect, but he was certainly doing enterprise architectural roles. But you might say, come on, be serious. Apollo, was that really an agile delivery project? Well, okay, they might not have done two week sprints and they might not have talked about things like uh, backlogs and things like that, but they most certainly did many of the things we do in agile programs. There was an incremental de uh, delivery of increasing business value. Let's remember it was release 11 from the program that landed on the moon, Apollo 11, not Apollo 1, not Apollo 2. Um, number 11 in a series of releases, each one of increasing value and capability to the program. There was most certainly feedback and learning. Uh, many examples I could choose here, but uh, one is that um, some fuel pipes had to be redesigned after release six, Apollo six, because of some severe vibrations uh, in the spacecraft that was caused by a problem with the fuel pipe design. And the program must certainly knew how to pivot Anybody who's seen the film Apollo 13 or has read up about it will know how the mission had to 
uh, pivot in an instant when there was that explosion on the way to the moon and uh, the program had to pivot in the blink of an eye to get the astronauts safely home again using the lunar module which was never designed for that purpose. So they did many of the things that you would see done uh, in agile delivery. And finally to think about that proposition the final part is success. Well history shows it was a success. It did fulfill the vision statement, the statement there from Kennedy about uh, going to the moon and safely returning to the earth. History shows that indeed uh, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin did indeed land on the moon and return safely to the earth. However, however, I realize I've appealed to a rather extreme example there of projects and time and cost and complexity. So let's bring it a little bit back down to earth and think about some of the very basic principles uh, of enterprise architecture. And I don't think I'd express that better than something I found here from the Federation of Enterprise Architecture Professionals. It was something published in 2013, something I believe the Open Group contributed to, along with a number of public and private sector organisations. Uh, and they published this paper called a common called Common Perspective on Enterprise Architecture. And they had this, this wonderful summary of what is there about enterprise architecture when you break it down to its most simple its most basic things and it's that cycle of reflecting where you're at determining where you need to go creating the plans to get there and then executing on those plans and you can and if you know TOGAF you can straight away put some things in those boxes like the as is model the 2b model the migration plans and the implementation governance very familiar very sensible things to anybody in enterprise architecture and also things that fit very well uh, in agile delivery frameworks. So if I come back just one last time to that proposition, enterprise architecture as a practice and the role of the enterprise architect are key for agile team success. I hope I've shown by looking at some of these things going right back to the beginning of the, uh, the agile manifesto um, some of the things that are present in the uh, major agile delivery frameworks like SAFE and DAD, the example from the Apollo program, and then going back to the very fundamental essence in that delivery cycle. I hope I've demonstrated quite clearly through that that these three things, the enterprise, uh, enterprise architecture, are vital to agile teams to give success. Thank you very much. Back to you, Sonia. Okay, thank you, Chris. That was a very interesting presentation on position. So now we are going ahead. Uh, we go to the next slide to visual presentation. So Visha, you are going to have also 10 minutes to stand for your position. Uh, we can perhaps move to the next slide to start with Visha's presentation. Visha, you have control of the slides. Okay. Okay, Bisha, so you have 10 minutes for your presentation. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, thanks, Sonia. And uh, great presentation by uh, uh, my fellow uh, Chris. Uh, so this is the con position, ladies and gentlemen. Agile team do not need support from enterprise architecture. Now, now uh, just to begin with, this is my views and, uh, and not uh, the organization's position on this topic. Now, this is a very interesting topic, you know, and then for this topic, I did uh, uh, leverage one of the toolkit from consumer behavior. This is known as top of the mind recall. Now, uh, in my working group of the open group, I asked few of the members what would come to their mind when they heard the term enterprise architecture and what comes to their mind when they hear the term agile. The result of this small uh, experiment or survey was quite intriguing because what comes in their top of the mind, uh, I'll show you in the next slide, is quite fascinating. Now, towards the left side, it's the five attributes with more frequency in their responses, which, which was more related to strategy, high level overview, strategic vision, governance, non-functional requirements. So, so if you want to bucket these things, it comes as a strategic uh, concept. However, when it comes to agile and the top five attributes which come to the respondent minds, it was about just enough architecture, less of documentation, high collaboration, team, frequent delivery. So 
you know one one uh, clear cut demarcation between these two leading frameworks uh, which comes to my mind uh, after this uh, response which i have received from the people was a clear demarcation one enterprise architecture kind of dealing with the strategic uh, part per se vis-a-vis -vis when it comes to agile it's it's more about the technical code level execution part so there the, the the perceived notion of these two uh, uh, you know uh, uh, architectures or uh, these two frameworks are quite different and there is a clear demarcation now after this uh, 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 you know after these uh, demarcations i've tried to find uh, through researches what could be the uh, you know uh, how agile team and ea might not give the intended result over here there are five rationals which i would like to present as my case for the con position which starts with the adherence to agile manifesto and and then then there are agile frameworks and its readiness applicability feasibility information asymmetry and and two of the tenets from tam model which was uh, developed by uh, davis so it, it's like perceived usefulness and perceived ease of use so we'll drill down in these five uh, rationals starting with the first one which is adhering to agile manifesto and agile's guiding principles now in agile team when we have worked uh, uh, you know so agile team are the crux or the guiding principles uh, which agile give impetus on is the bottom up innovation it's very important if you see any agile team there are lots of innovations which comes from the developers of the agile team and 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 and, and they give focus on you know the bottom up innovation new uh, challenges to the status quo those kind of things now my question over here is with enterprise architecture coming up and then you know kind of leveraging uh, the team structure uh, whether whether it will impede the innovation or uh, innovation aspect of the agile team so this is a question which needs to be answered similarly agile also encourages rapid changes uh, so you know and then they are the self reliant agile team so it, it's already a cross functional team members from various backgrounds coming together so the perceived notion of agile team is that it's self sufficient they don't need someone to help them uh, or guide them for the delivery so this is the self reliant agile team and and lastly uh, as krish also mentioned about the agile manifesto so the 68 words of agile manifesto which which i will show you so uh, you know so these are the 68 words of agile manifesto which which uh, kind of if you can read these things it's like individual and interactions over processes and tools similarly customer collaboration over contract negotiation responding to change over following a plan do they value the right side but you know they they kind of underscore the left side more now over here again we have to ask a question whether enterprise architect with agile whether it will impede these guidelines these principles or what would be the end result this brings to the second point through the research which i have find out that maturity of agile framework in terms of ea applicability is also a question which needs to be asked now uh, so there was one research in which they have find out 20 agile frameworks to be precise they were 20 scaled agile frameworks and out of those 20 ladies and gentlemen four frameworks were having uh, applicability of enterprise architecture in fact few were uh, architecture and and only three was uh, featuring enterprise architecture in the research and out of those four or three also the details and how to guide was not uh, comprehensive now when i say about how to guide there are four things which comes to my mind first is the area of contribution where ea will contribute what would be the commitment of an enterprise architect in an agile team what would be the responsibility whether it will be an active responsibility or it would be a passive responsibility or a passive support what would be the strategy how it will come in that scrum team if it's a scrum scrum framework being used how these things will be there no detail as such is uh, exhaustively mentioned over the research 
uh, I'll, I'll show you, uh, this was one of the findings from the researchers. Uh, in the left side, you can see there are 20 frameworks out of which the three highlighted are kind of, uh, you know, matured enough in terms of contributions and cases and documentations. So, uh, so out of these 20, now, now we'll go to the drill down of what, what the researchers have found out. So you can see these are the four ones, DSDM, SAFE, Disciplined Agile 2.0, EA, DAGP. So these four mentions architect's role in a way. Out of these four also, uh, SAFE, DA 2.0, EA, DGP mentions enterprise architect. That's I have highlighted for you for easier identification. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, I would like to reiterate these are not only four, these are out of 24 Agile frameworks mentioned the EA applicability in their frameworks or in their guides. So this research is a bit dated, that is it's, it's dated 2017. So certain things would have improved in the right direction, but this we have to keep in mind because the handshake is always two ways. Now this brings to a third very important factors, which is applicability and feasibility. So researchers have said that on a high level strategy front, yes, they can go. There is a chances where Agile and EA can go together. However, when it comes to low level, technology development, coding, should we leave it for Agile alone? I mean, because they are self-reliant team as per the guidelines. So should we leave it for them alone? Or is there a really need for an enterprise architect to come there and help in the architecture? There is also a fear of over architecting. It's very important that we don't do overdo something, you know, just because we want to do. So fear of over architecting is there very much prevalent. So we have to be sure enough that we are doing it in a right way. And then last uh, in this uh, subheading is cost of continuous remodeling. So when we, when we say agile team, you know, uh, there are changes which happens over a minute. You know, uh, so in a meeting, there will be three, four changes, which can just, just uh, with consensus, it will just pass away. So will the business is happily accepting those costs, which will be associated with such continuous ongoing remodeling. So this is again a question which needs to be discussed, deciphered and, and uh, with consensus, the team has to decide. Fourth point is related to information asymmetry. Now researchers, uh, one of the research mentioned that though enterprise architect understands what developers are doing and they can appreciate their role. However, a developers might not understand the role or the contribution which enterprise architects are making. Now this information asymmetry is, is pretty huge and it's very important that uh, this uh, this uh, asymmetry needs to be bridged wherein developers are appreciating the role of an enterprise architect and vice versa so it's very important communication channels effectiveness of the communication is a key in any any engagement any projects last in this point the uh, the second point is uh, the agile and non agile team you know when i say this i mean in, 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 let's say there is a program or a project and these program or projects, ladies and gentlemen, consist of both agile team and non agile team because it's a large scale projects. So how EA will fit in such programs wherein there are agile team and non agile team working together, what would be the role of enterprise architects there? So these are the questions. Again, we have to find the answer to and we have to clear cut uh, define how we are going to approach it. Fifth point is related to perceived usefulness and perceived ease of use. Now, over here, important is value quantification or the return of investment. How will you demarcate a project with only Agile team working in it vis-a-vis -a, -vis a second project in which there is EA plus Agile coming together? What would be the return on investment? Because EA is not uh, coming for free, right? There is a cost to it. So how will you quantify the value of the second team EA plus agile vis-a-vis -vis one team in which this is a question last point over here 
is related to governance approach now ea favors a lean lightweight decentralized collaborative governance approach however ea uh, you know coming in with an agile team it it might not support that way so how ea can be customized so that governance approach can be lightweighted can be collaborative and can be decentralized so these two aspects needs to come together so that there would be a value otherwise it would be a over uh, over architecting so you know so these are the factors from my side uh, which are uh, uh, really important and which we have to keep in mind that enterprise architect should support agile team be more agile and it should not be the other way around that's it from my side uh, over to you sonia okay thank you Vishal. it was a very interesting position so now we are going ahead on the debate and now we wanted to hear from you from our attendees i have seen quite a set of very interesting comments in the chat so we have a few minutes like 10 minutes to read this however i wanted to give one or more more minutes for you to post your comments on your questions in the q a facility and then we are going to go very quickly over them and we're going to test if the comments are supporting or in the against or the cons position and, and after that we are going to have uh, like the summation from the debaters so we're going to give one more minutes for uh, for you to comment and give your feedback over the channel and then we are going to to start like sharing the results with all of you. Okay, I think while that is happening, I will start sharing some of the comments. So we have one that is quite interesting. It said, I have seen breakdowns between agile teams where APIs were built against separate design and standard with the architecture playing a central role, ensuring consistency. This created a big breakdown upon release and additional sprints to reroad the code. Big waste of time. Business missed its product launch commitment. Interesting comment. That's another comment in relation with the with the rocket launch, but at the end it has to be a big man. Okay, the other one, since we deal mostly with software and software is so easy to build in an agile fashion, why do I have to build an EA? Why not just reference existing models? It seems to be like a again this position. We have another one which is related with the founder of Agile States, and we have uh a link in here stating that Agile Manifesto was corrupt in the very beginning. It was never to be just limited to working software. That is the least of it. I think this refers to the fact that Agile should imply the Agile enterprise and not only software delivery. So it seems in your view to support the overall view of EA. Another one, more a comment than a question. Enterprise architecture is very important for the success of Agile. This is also my experience in practice, not just in theory. But what kind of enterprise architecture? So while agreeing with the importance of EA to Agile, it will respectfully disagree with how EA is defined in this talk. Okay, this is a, an interesting comment. I think it's some feedback for us. So Agile needs to be, EA needs to be adapted to fulfill Agile. Another comment, my fear is under architecting, letting teams to go far out on their own creating solutions that are unique and fall too far out of the standard for proper integration with other business systems. Okay, this is another important comment. We have seen this, uh, a lot of debates in the architecture forum about how, how is the right amount of architecture that we need to do. Another one, I have seen overcoding against the garden of architecture seems to support the previous ones, the concept of the minimal viable architecture in here. A comment about Bishop's position appears to be based on a, one of the other thinking. I believe that these are complementary. EA and Agile can be leveraged effectively to address different scopes within the same program and project. This seems to be also more on the side of the of the positive position or the against position. And let me see, we have more comments in here. Agile teams normally deliver value for a product. Do you agree that it is essential that you have a good tension between product versus enterprise? Too much focus on product can drive up enterprise costs. Too much focus on enterprise can stifle innovation and value. Okay, this is about the balance between product 
enterprise architecture or, or enterprise, which is also another interesting view. As one of the primary responsibilities of an EA program is to position our organization to take advantage of market disruptor to gain a competitive advantage. Agility and innovation are essential through all the organization. In the absence of EA, it is uncertain how the enterprise wide knowledge sharing collaboration required to ensure agility and innovation will be achieved. Moreover, operating in a silo manner of center of EA strategy and business insight, who will agile teams ensure the platform force they deliver advanced organizational competitive advantage and sufficiently address dynamic market change and customer demands. This is also seems to support the need of having EA. EA and Agile are complementary. These are positions. It's, it's also fine in that regard. Agile teams can be too siloed, too focused on hurry up and deliver something, anything without EA providing vision across all the silos. The individual teams can disappear down their ends. Another position that seems to support the use of EA. In the survey, the question is about scaling Agile frameworks, but in reality, the established Agile frameworks are not more than 10. Most influential, let's say, is that Nexus, etc. This is about the uh, Agile frameworks. More to see in here. I don't see a contradiction between the two presenters. Agile doesn't have to be exclusive in the development of solutions. EA function and Agile teams can and should complement each other. Okay, another interesting position how the two views collaborate together. Another one, being agile without EA is like being fast on things that may not be the right things. EA ensure the right things are executed. Good position, also seem to support the presence of EA. I will read a couple more. If requirement and goal is required for agile sprint team, then EA inputs and artifacts are required to go lead and successful deliver. But the current fact is too many organizations has not realized the value of EA and that's a painful truth. Another position in favor. Another one I have seen solution architects role bringing the gap between EA and functional teams to be really successful. Okay, so this seems to support that we may not need EA that much. Okay, then the last one that I will read, the lack of time. First, the Agile Manifesto is an opinion and a direction, but not the Bible to implement Agile. Secondly, many of the Agile frameworks mentioned have been deprecated. Okay, so thank you. I think we have quite a very good set of interesting positions now. Uh, so I guess we're going to see now after the summation of the positions, how this has been may affected the vote at the end. So can we move to the next slide, please? Okay, thank you for giving me the control. So we have already heard your feedback and comments, very valuable by the way, very good. So now we are going to have two minutes and please I need to ask you to please stand to the two minutes It's part of the debate. You need to be able to summarize your position in a few words. So we're going to start with Chris. So Chris, you will have exactly two minutes to restate your position. And immediately after that, we're going to go with Bishop with the same. So go ahead, Chris. Okay, thank you very much, Sonia. Um, well, there's been some interesting points uh, there raised by the audience and in the, the two minutes I've got, uh, I can't possibly um, go through and respond to anything individually. But uh, I, I take some uh, I, I, I take some good heart from the fact that none of them seem to be um, heavily against the idea that uh, enterprise architecture is a necessary thing for um, agile teams uh, and indeed many of them I would say are, are broadly supportive. Um, coming back to a point that I think one of the what one of the comments did did make um, it's true that there are many different agile delivery frameworks out there and not all of them do talk about um, enterprise architecture or indeed uh, architecture at all in some cases um, but I think one of the most telling things is that certainly current market statistics that I've seen show that uh, SAFE is by far the most popular agile at scale framework and um, seen very clearly that that does identify the need both for the role of the enterprise architect and the function of, of enterprise architecture and, and that's not just some sort of theoretical thing um, it's it's simply because when you're doing these large-scale programs you need those sort of 
high level um, outline design and and planning decisions made so that the work of the later delivery teams um, is coherent and built on the right sort of foundations somebody raised the great point about apis and if you didn't make a decision in advance about what type of APIs you were going to use, what sort of uh, protocols you were going to follow, what sort of API patterns you were going to follow, then how on earth do we think that separate um, delivery teams within a large program could actually produce a coherent solution? Uh, and similarly, um, platform type, type decisions need to be taken in advance so that separate components of a solution can be built um, to collaborate as they need to to produce a coherent solution. So while I recognize that um, in some very small perhaps and very specific cases then an emergent architecture might be sufficient, I think the practical things that we get involved in in business um, are rarely of that size and scale. Um, it's the larger programs where the enterprise architecture is necessary. Um, having that guidance, having that um, high level approach and planning worked out, and that's where we critically need the enterprise architect and the function of enterprise architecture. And I think I'll close on that. Okay, thank you, Chris, for that. So now I'll come to you, Vishal. You also have uh, two minutes to state your summation. So please go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much, Sonia. So interesting comments from our uh, viewers. Uh, you know, uh, but but I would try, like to reiterate some of the pointers. The the crux is yes, the two uh, frameworks can go together, E as well as Agile. However, those five pointers and the sub points which I mentioned needs to be well defined, needs to be you know understood, needs to be aware uh, you know and then only it will be a successful implementation of ea plus agile over here uh, uh, again i would like to reiterate one more important thing that agile is there right but when we say ea it should complement agile in all the ways so that agile team becomes more agile it should not impede the basic fundamental of agile and then you know then it would be a good successful engagement or a project so that complement thing should be there on both sides. And the last uh, point of which I would like to communicate as an enterpri uh, enterprise architect, we all have to be con conscious of our evolving role when we are talking about agile, which means now the developer should also understand what EA is doing. And so, so the role is vast now. We have to take the entire team together if it is going to be applied with the agile team. So we have to be ready with upskilling ourselves so that we can take the entire team together, keeping those five pointers, challenges, bottlenecks in line and, and having answer to those things in advance so that the implementation would be a success. With this, uh, over to you, Sonia. Okay, thank you, Michelle. That was a very good summation. So now we are going into the interesting part. So we need to ask you to vote again, the same options that we have in the first round, either for the for or the against position, or you can also stay. And then whenever we have finished that, we are going to give you a couple of minutes to vote. Uh, we are going to, to come some conclusions comparing the two results, the one we had at the beginning and the one that we had at the end. So please, uh, you have two minutes now to vote. It seems to be that the the voting is closed. Can we open in that again so people can? Oh, that is, it seems to be open again. I'm not sure. Yes, I'm also seeing the message poll is closed. I'm not sure if others are seeing the same. Um. Yes, yeah, so you have been a new poll to to compare the results of the first one. Uh, could it be possible to have that quickly put over? The, the poll is open, folks. Yeah. Okay. The uh, before debate poll is closed, but the after debate poll is open. There are 56 oh, okay. responses Great. so far. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Now I click on the polling button again. Yes, it's refreshed it. So now uh, vote now. Okay, good. 
Okay, I think time is up now, so we can can we please have the results on the screen to see we can have some some contrast with the previous one. Okay, so interesting. So numbers are a little bit a little bit small for my end, but it thinks we have more or less the same trend. We have a little less votes from the previous one. In the previous round, we had 85 percent of people voting for the first for the fourth position and it seems a similar trend actually it's a little bit higher so it seems like uh, we may have convinced more people <laughs> about this so it's refreshing now so yeah it seems like we have convinced more people and the trends seem to be that most attendees believe that enterprise architecture is important for agile which is something good because you know uh, we understand that the practice uh, like we have said in several presentations today and in the days before it needs to have a shift to become agile so um after this we're going to the final conclusion so can we go back to the slides please thank you okay so so some conclusions so perhaps uh, one final comment for from you, Chris and Vishal, before closing the debate. Um, yep. Yeah, final comment then. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Sorry. Um, so, well, uh, first of all, uh, Vishal, thanks. Uh, good debate. I know a difficult uh, position to. Um, put forward um, and I suppose let's be honest in a TOGAF user group we shouldn't be surprised that there's support for the idea that a uh, enterprise architect is is necessary in in agile delivery and um, so perhaps not a surprise that we've only seen a very a very small shift in the numbers um, I think the message does come through loud and clear that never you know we all accept that the, some of the things we've learned in the past need to be adapted need to be adapted changed a little bit um, for enterprise architecture to work in the context of agile delivery but you know i firmly believe it is still absolutely necessary and i think the the poll today has uh, borne that out thank you chris michelle one final comment from you uh yeah it's, it's a one liner from my side that as enterprise architect we have to be agile enough you know so Enterprise architect being agile and delivering a uh, agile project in an in a, in a advanced way is is the key to success. But yeah, it's it was a beautiful debate from Chris, and you know Apollo thirteen example was uh, was something uh, something amazing. So yep, with that, uh, you know, over to you, Sonia. Okay, thank you very much, Chris and Visha. Thank you for joining us in this debate, this virtual debate. I think it has been quite interesting. Thank you for our attendees. You know, the comments were quite interesting and show some experience, which is always good. So uh, if I have final, final remark, please take a look of these key resources that you will see in here, the Open Group Library, certification programs, our blog, you will find interesting uh, blogs in there. Uh, one of them, by the way, a few of them are about Agile and the Open Group Arc for the digital enterprise which is something we presented earlier and for those of you that are still not members of the open group you will find some interesting membership information so you can join us and contribute to the delivery of these new practices into the market so thank you very much everyone for attending this uh, virtual debate and over to you now steve thank you